out of all of the things that I love talking about on this channel, maybe today I'm talking about my absolute favorite, lawsuits. Okay, maybe there's a sense of sarcasm in that first opening statement, but this suit, Clemson suit against the ACC, could get the ball rolling as it pertains to Big Ten expansion in the Southeast. From LA to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. Florida State's got a buddy in their search for the Holy Grail right now, and that Holy Grail is locked up like some of the most valuable documents in the world. Documents at the Vatican Archives, documents at the National Archives are some of the most protected documents in the world. Slide into that three spot might be the grant of rights agreement between the ACC and ESPN. I believe that there is a reason why schools have struggled to get their hands on it, why schools have trouble, have had trouble getting their eyes on this particular document, because I think the ACC knows that there are things within the grant of rights that are going to hurt their case, like ESPN being able to opt out in 2027. There are things in that grant of rights that hurt the future and the viability of the ACC as a conference. All right, I'm not going to get into all the legal jargon. I'm not going to get into the, the legality of all of the things surrounding this lawsuit. I'm not a lawyer. There are other channels. There are other podcasts. There are, there are other shows that are going to be able to cover that better than I can. But of course, I want to focus in on how this affects the Big Ten Conference going forward. Before we got to get to that point, we got to first talk about this. Florida State and Clemson, these were two pretty big shoes to drop. Once the Florida State news happened, we expected Clemson to be next. And now that both of these schools have open lawsuits against the ACC, what's the next big thing? I believe the next big thing could be the biggest thing. Because now all eyes turn to the heart of ACC country. They turn to North Carolina. Specifically, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. UNC is a school that both the Big Ten and the SEC are after and right in the heart of ACC country. A lot of these schools are saying this grant of rights is bogus. We shouldn't have to pay anything despite us signing our name on the dotted line to get out of this thing. But then the ACC says, we're standing tough. You're going to stay in this thing until 2036. You know what's going to happen. It's a public negotiation. They're going to meet in the middle. We need to find out the number. That's what all of this is. Because once the ACC sets the precedent, once they say, pay us $100 million and you're out of the grant of rights and you can go wherever you want. Once that number is public and once that precedent and that bar is set, that's when the floodgates are going to completely open. Because to be honest, some schools might say, yeah, it's worth it. Some other schools might say, maybe we'll hang on for just a minute longer. Read the graphic below me. Is Clemson bound for the Big Ten Conference? There's a couple of ways we can approach this. The first thing I can hear people saying it now, maybe the more traditional Big Ten expansion types. People are going to be shouting academics, academics, AAU, AAU. AAU is a hot button, three letters when people talk about Big Ten expansion. Folks, it is not a requirement. Academically, Clemson, they're not last. And they wouldn't be last in U.S. news rankings and other academic rankings, right? They're 86th in the U.S. news rankings right now. That's above schools like Iowa. That's above schools like Nebraska. That's above schools like Oregon. Although they might not have that AAU certification, right? This is not a program. This is not a university that would bring down the academic profile of the Big Ten. What is Clemson's worth? That is the question I think we're going to find out throughout the next couple of months, maybe the next couple of years, depending on how long this thing exactly goes, because the worth to the SEC might determine where the Clemson Tigers go. There was a pact or an agreement, a handshake agreement between schools and the SEC at one point. Who knows if this pact exists anymore? But at one point there was basically agreeing that we would form a voting block. So school, we would not let an additional school in our state 
into the SEC. So Georgia would not allow Georgia Tech. South Carolina would not allow Clemson and so on and so forth. It was that pact that some people thought might keep Texas out of the SEC. But Texas is one of those brands when they're on the table, you bring them into your home and you bring them into your family. I personally believe that that pact does not exist anymore. I believe all of the things that you knew about conference realignment three, five, seven, nine, ten years ago, crumple it up and throw it out the window because we are in such a different age and it goes with the on the field product as well. What you did five years ago does not apply and you can't follow the same plan in today's day and age as well. So how does the SEC view Clemson right now? Of course, they already have a school in the state of South Carolina. I think they view now with Oklahoma and Texas coming into their conference that they've got the biggest and the baddest. I believe the SEC has more of a priority in North Carolina and more of a priority in Virginia. They believe they've got the best brands in the South. Now it is time for them to explore new markets. It is time for them to expand their territory throughout the South and the Eastern portion of the United States of America. I think one thing that we've learned is that the SEC has been pretty selective when it comes to conference realignment. Right now, this is just my opinion, I don't really see the SEC putting Clemson in a big priority spot right now, which opens the door for the Big Ten Conference. But Clemson is keeping the door more open for the SEC than Florida State did. Remember, when Florida State filed their lawsuit, this was right after that college football playoff decision, which obviously we know that they're kind of in bed with the ESPN right now and have a strong relationship, let's just put it that way, and it's going to be stronger with that deal that's now going to run through the 2030s as well. Florida State sent a scathing response to ESPN, and that is what kind of led people to think that Florida State would wind up in the non-ESPN conference in the Big Ten. Clemson was a lot nicer, shall we say, when talking about ESPN and how they didn't want to burn any bridges with ESPN going forward. I think that's keeping the door open for the SEC, but it takes two to tango. It takes Greg Sankey propping the door open for Clemson. I think Greg Sankey wants to prop the door open for schools in the states of North Carolina and Virginia more than he does for a second school in the state of South Carolina. This now opens up the conversation for Clemson in the Big Ten. I believe Florida State right now is the number one target for the Big Ten specifically, just like maybe North Carolina is the number one target for the SEC specifically. But beyond that, if the Big Ten wants to stake their claim, because I believe that they want to have a pod or at least a group of schools down there in the Southeast. I believe Miami is a candidate. They might be even a, a bigger candidate and higher on the priority list than Clemson. I'm not sure if Clemson is a top two target right now for the Big Ten Conference where they're at. Because when I look at Clemson for the Big Ten, what happens when Clemson, right, they've maybe fallen off, right? They were at, you know, 2016, 17, 18. Those types of years, they were at the top of the sport. They were at the top of college football. They were bringing in big ratings, right? They had the best quarterbacks, Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence. They had all kinds of great players, and they were really putting it together and were a great product to watch. But what happens to Clemson when they're not an elite football program? The question is asked, can Clemson carry Atlanta? It's a two-hour drive from Clemson, South Carolina to downtown Atlanta, Georgia, where Georgia Tech is. Now, personally, I believe Clemson might actually carry Atlanta or at least the area-ish around Atlanta a little bit more than Georgia Tech, but that's still a question that needs to be answered. That is not a 100% fact right now. This is not a situation with Clemson where if you bring in USC, you own Los Angeles, right? We know Atlanta's a dog town. We know Georgia's a dog state, and we know how dominant the Georgia Bulldogs are right now. If Clemson is not winning 12 games a year, if they're not winning 13 games a year, and you got to think going from the ACC into a much tougher conference like the Big Ten, you got to think maybe their profile might drop a little bit. What becomes their value at that point? Clemson's value is at its highest 
when this football program is elite. Remember, the history of the program is maybe not one like a big-time Southern program. This is at least at the top of the sport, the elite of the sport. Yes, they've won championships in other eras as well, but in terms of being at the top of the sport consistently, this is a pretty recent trend for Clemson. Where is the Big Ten's investment? If they are not at the heart of a significant market, where is the interest after that? Because Miami brings a hell of a market with not only the size and the media landscape on South Beach, but the recruiting aspect as well in South Florida. Now, Clemson, they might see, brings in a significant recruiting footprint of their own. These are all questions that the Big Ten needs to answer. If the Big Ten wants to stop at 20 teams, I'm not sure if the Tigers will be bound for this conference. Because we know the rivalry that exists between the Miami Hurricanes and the Florida State Seminoles. Rivalries are a big part of bringing these things together, whether it's creating new rivalries or bringing new rivalries to a new television package and a new television audience. Um, I believe right now that Miami, if they get their ducks in a row, Miami could be a little bit ahead in line of Clemson. And maybe that's why Clemson jumped the gun and did exactly what they did when they did it. These are not easy decisions. And I've pondered over Miami and Clemson. And if you stop at 20, who exactly do you take? And sometimes I kind of flip flop back and forth. I tend to settle on Miami more than I do Clemson. But to be honest with you, I think the Big Ten is going to expand further than 20. I really believe that. I I think 24 is the max. Maybe we meet in the middle at somewhere like 22. But Clemson might be just a big enough brand to eventually make their way into the Big Ten Conference. I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think the Tigers will be bound for the Big Ten following this lawsuit? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.